Kharim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Just a little quick take this evening, guys, of our broadcast. Want to share some things here with you uh, that's going on. Of course, as you guys already know, we are here in Paris, France, here to cover the United Nations meeting that is uh, happening here. 70 nations, actually 72 nations, are being represented here. Uh, by the different groups around the world coming against Israel to divide the land, to uh, effectively create a Palestinian state. Another thing that's been very interesting as well, it's been nearly a media blackout, it seems, uh, to get the actual location where they are holding this conference here. Uh, no matter where you go, and I've had friends from different news organizations, independent journalists that have searched uh, with me, trying to find it. And finally, one sister on Israeli News Live was able to find that information for us uh, because there's a number of locations where they could actually host this particular meeting. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to go out tomorrow. They are meeting on Sunday. I have also gotten word that they're already in preliminary meetings for this already. Uh, they have been since, I think, today. But the official starting date is actually Sunday. Uh, and it is believed that the United States will not, uh, they will not be interfering on dividing the land of Israel, which may very much ignite a, a war that is beyond proportions that we could even imagine there. Uh, let's take, I want to go right on over here into a couple of other articles here. Um, maybe a little difficult for you guys to see on your screen there. Let me bring this down the best I can. Uh, the blast that the Syrian army has stated was the Israelis using one of their F-35s to attack uh, the Damascus airport, a couple of the military positions there, uh, has also been denied for, or thus far, not at least not admitted by Israel. Uh, it's being called a mystery blast uh, in Damascus at this point now. And uh, so therefore, Israel is not uh, saying that there was anything that they had involved in this. And, you know, so maybe it is just Syria accusing Israel of something that has not actually happened. When we, we first got the report, uh, we went based on what Syria was saying themselves. Uh, but uh, thus far, Israel is not claiming any responsibility. And, of course, Israel in the past normally has uh, targeted inside of Syria because of trying to hit Hezbollah. And uh, at this point here, Israel has not made any response whatsoever, uh, as far as we can see, trying to target Hezbollah, moving weapons into Lebanon, uh, which is a major risk for the Israelis. Uh, so I want to make sure we clarify that. You know, the Syrian army is the one saying they believe that it came from, uh, uh, from the Galilee area and that Israel was using F-35s. But at this point here, Israel, and normally Israel will admit to doing something like this, but they have not admitted to any of these things. So it may be that NATO or someone else may have been involved in it, uh, the uh, part of the uh, rebel force that is fighting in the country against President Bashar al-Assad. At this point right now, it just remains a mystery. Uh, so we'll update you as soon as we can find out more about that. Something I really wanted to bring to your attention, a friend of mine in Holland sent to me today. Uh, this is very disturbing. This is a German report. Uh, you are seeing here on your screen uh, the, the numbers, or excuse me, I'm fixing to share with you in just a second here. Uh, this is a video that uh, Renza sent to me. This is Holland uh, sending in a huge number of tanks and army personnel, military personnel coming into Poland as well. And we're talking 3,000, uh, 600 uh, military troops also going into Poland as well. Uh, as we've shared with you already, the U.S. has sent in about 1,500 uh, military pieces of equipment. Now we have Holland sending in a tremendous number of military equipment, tanks, army personnel carriers. Uh, we see the U.S. has been sending in the Apache group helicopters as well. Russia calling this uh, these actions a, a, a threat to their national security. Uh, but it's kind of interesting, too, if you look at what Russia is saying as well, 
Russia here on the Russian insider, uh, they, uh, defense minister says Russia could shift from nukes to smart bombs to deter the foes that they encounter. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting in this article here on the Russian insider. It shows that the Russian uh, government is trying to hold out for President-elect Donald Trump to get into office. Uh, says Russian Defense Minister Sergei Soigu said Russia could choose an uh, asymmetrical response to Trump's announced nuclear buildup and by rearming their nuclear weapons with just smart strategical bombs. In other words, downsizing their own military capability in order to try to bring about a lasting peace around the world. Uh, that's a new step for Russia in a direction that certainly would help the world to be a safer place. Let's see how things play out, and let's hope Obama does not drag the entire world into a war before leaving office. I know that there are some saying these are military exercises, what they're doing. That is a unprecedented number of military equipment to come in to just to show a military exercise, something that has taken months and months to move this much of equipment. Uh, what are they going to do with it once it's here? Move it all back to America again? That's a huge tax dollar uh, payment, to say the very least. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom, friends. And uh, thank you for being a part of the work that we're doing here. And we thank you for your uh, help and your continued help in this work that we're trying to do here in Paris, France. I'm Stephen Benoon. You can visit us at IsraeliNewsLive.org if you would like to be a part of that. Shalom and good evening.